I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Micro quads are super popular, and they're getting better and better, but putting a receiver in them can be a little bit tricky. Even the smaller receivers that are available today can be a little bit big for some of these, especially the little two-inch quads. So today we're going to look at a receiver from full speed that is so freaking small, and it's cheap. So what's not to like? Well, there is a little quirk it's got with regards to inversion, and that's going to lead us to the, you're going to learn something today. We're going to talk about signal inversion and the Betaflight command line options for signal inversion, which are kind of stupid. Stay tuned. If you were to ask me what FreeSky receiver to put into a micro quad two weeks ago, I would have said the FreeSky XM Plus, and that is what we're looking at here. This is the XM Plus. It is pretty small. It's not too expensive. It's got diversity. It doesn't have telemetry, so it's not a full telemetry capable receiver, but you know, for micro receivers, for micro quads, maybe that's not as important as a lot of people don't care about that. So the XM Plus, but there's a better option today. Well, better along some axes. This is the full speed nano receiver. And you can see if we hold them side by side, wow, it's even, it's like half the size of an XM plus. Now there are some differences that you're going to want to be aware of. As you can see from the fact that it's only got one antenna, this is not a diversity receiver. I think that matters less for micro quads because especially just based on the size of the battery, you're probably not pushing range very much anyway but it doesn't have uh, diversity, and if that matters to you, then you may want to pass it up. The other thing it doesn't have is, it is a D8 mode receiver, not D16. So what that means is, you're gonna need to set failsafe manually. There's a function in the Tyrannus where you set failsafe using the Tyrannus. The Tyrannus communicates the failsafe settings to the receiver. Well, that only works with D16 receivers. If you use model match, which is the ability to uh, prevent the Tyrannus from binding to a receiver, except unless it's a specific receiver, that doesn't work with D8. It only works with D16. And smart port telemetry doesn't work with D8. It only works with D16. But if you're willing to live with those little quirks, this is a heck of a nice little receiver for micro quads. It's about 10 bucks. It's so freaking small that even on something like, now this is uh, the Diatone Marauder uh, 515, it's a 1806 motor, five inch quad. I'll be doing a review of this soon. In fact, I'm setting it up. That's why I'm making this video. It's so easy to fit in here. Just, you could just, there's any number of places it can fit. And yeah, you could get the XM Plus in there, but it's just a little bit more of a struggle. And especially as you get down to really small quads, like this is the base plate for a Diatone GTR 90, a two inch quad, man, this, the space savings here and the short little antenna, it's just, this is really nice. But there is a quirk with this that you're going to want to know about. And that takes us to our discussion of SBUS inversion. And for that, we're going to go over to the computer. So here's the product page for this receiver over at Full Speed's website. And if you're going to use this receiver, there is something you need to know. This receiver puts out uninverted SBUS. And that is really nice, especially if you're using an F4 flight controller that doesn't have uh, an SBUS pad or maybe doesn't have U. It's, it saves you a little bit of hassle, but it also means that you need to go into the command line and you need to enter this command. And if you're using an F4 flight controller, you may need to use a regular UART RX pad instead of the SBUS pad on your flight controller. Um, so FreeSky, or rather Full Speed, have tried to save you a little bit of hassle by having their receiver output uninverted SBUS, but because it's not what your flight controller is expecting, it's added a little bit of hassle. So it solves one problem, but it makes another. Now you know. But what's the deal with inversion? And how do, what is this? What is all this serial X inverted anyway? What does that mean? Let's talk about that for a second. When we start talking about inverted protocols, the first thing to establish is that digital signals are represented by ones and zeros, right? I think pretty much everybody knows that. And if we were to go down and look at the electrical signals that represent the ones and zeros, a simple way to think about that is that a high voltage represents a one and a low voltage represents a zero. 
So we could define our signaling voltage as 3.3 volts or 5 volts. And when this, when the voltage is at 5 volts, we're sending a 1. When it's at 0 volts, we're sending a 0. And that's more or less how it works. Inverted protocols, basically, they just flip that. So an inverted protocol would say, I, I think a, a 1 is going to be 0 volts and a 0 is going to be 5 volts. And that may strike you as kind of contrary, like who cares? Just do it, right? <laughs> and there's some truth to that. But there are also some technical reasons why inverted protocols may have some advantage. Uh, I recently learned and, and I checked and this is apparently not just total BS. I recently learned that running a serial signal through an inverter can help the signal be a little bit more resistant to noise. I don't know why. Okay, so there's there's technical reasons why inversion might make sense, but inversion is super annoying because the UARTs, what's a UART? A UART is a hardware serial interface. So if we look at the flight controller and on the flight controller, there's that little chip, which is like an F3 or an F4 or an F7. It's basically a little microprocessor and it has hardware in it that lets it interpret serial signals because that's such a common thing that, that we need to do is read ones and zeros from external devices. That's just built into the chip. Well, some of those chips have the ability to interpret an inverted signal and some of them don't. Specifically, the F3 and the F7 can handle an inverted signal natively. They just know, you just tell them, hey, this is an inverted signal. I got it. But an F4 and an F1 can't do that. And so if you feed an inverted signal into an F4 or an F1, it just won't be able to read it. Now, why does this matter? Because SBUS and SmartPort are inverted by sort of, that's just how FreeSky decided to define them. And so when you have an SBUS receiver, it is sending an inverted signal. And how do we work around this? Well, on an F3 or an F7, there's no need to work around it because they can handle the inverted signal natively. But on an F4, which is the, pop, the most popular flight controller today, at least, the designer of the board has to put an inverter on the board. So the signal comes out of the receiver and it's verted, inverted and it goes through an inverter and it's uninverted and then it goes into the microprocessor and everything is fine. You with me so far? That's why F4 flight controllers have dedicated SBUS and smart port pads and not just UART receive pads or transmit pads like F3s and F7s do. The, the dedicated SBUS and smart port pads on those F4s have an inverter built in. Now you may, you may be thinking, my flight controller doesn't do that, do it that way. I just use a regular receive pad. Some designers of some flight controllers have built their boards so that the receive pad can have an inverter. But the bottom line is on an F4, you gotta have an inverter somewhere for it to be able to handle these inverted protocols. But there's another way to solve this problem and that's to do what's called the uninvert hack on your receiver. The uninvert hack means that you find somewhere on the receiver to get the uninverted signal. See, the signal comes out of the receiver's processor uninverted, and then the receiver runs it through an inverter to invert it, and then we run it through another inverter to uninvert it, and it's all a bunch of <laughs> makes my brain explode. But you can solder a wire to a particular place on your receiver. If you Google FreeSky uninvert hack, you'll find pages from guys like Project Blue Falcon and Oscar Leong showing you how to do it. Why don't I have one of those? Well, because they already did a great job at it. So why should I? You can do the uninvert hack on your receiver and then you are getting the uninverted signal and then you can just feed that uninverted signal to any UART on your flight controller, even if it's an F4. But here's a problem. When you tell your flight controller, this, this UART is getting an S bus signal or a smart port signal, the flight controller expects that that signal is going to be inverted. So if you're feeding it an uninverted signal, you got to go in there and say, hey, this is SBUS, but it's not inverted. I've done the work for you. Don't worry about it. And in order to do that, you got to go to the command line. And that's where if you, if you haven't got lost yet, things get a little bit more confusing because the way the Betaflight devs have chosen to name these command line options and the way they work is like mind bogglingly confusing. Only a computer programmer would have made this decision. I'm going to try and help it make sense for you. Let's see, get inverted. 
There we go. Perfect. There are two parameters that you're concerned with, and they are serial RX inverted and TLM inverted. And these two parameters tell the flight controller whether your serial protocol is or is not inverted and whether your uh, telemetry protocol is or is not inverted. Most of the time, serial RX inverted is going to be referring to SBUS. TLM inverted is going to be referring to SmartPort because they're pretty much the only protocols that are inverted like this. Everybody else is uninverted and you don't have to go through this nonsense. Okay, so I've got a regular S bus receiver. I haven't done any hacks or anything. It is putting out S bus. It's time for a quiz. Is S bus an inverted or an uninverted protocol? It's inverted. We talked about that. S bus is an inverted serial protocol. So should serial RX inverted be on or off if you're using S bus? You would think that the answer is on because S bus is an inverted protocol. Therefore, serial X or inverted should be on. And you would think that smart port being an inverted protocol, then TLM inverted should be on. But that is not how they work. It works exactly opposite of that. The way it works is if the serial protocol is inverted from the way it usually is, then serial RX inverted is on. And if you do the uninvert hack on your receiver, therefore you have inverted the inversion of the protocol, then serial RX inverted should be on because now the inverted protocol is uninverted. So you inverted it. <sighs> Kill me. Kill me now. This has caused so much confusion. I see what they were getting at. What they were getting at is... They want to have, they don't want to just say S bus inverted on or off. They want to be generic and say, well, any serial protocol could or could not be inverted from its normal inversion status. But in trying to be sort of generically applicable, they've made it totally backwards and confusing for everybody. Here's the takeaway. The takeaway is that if you have done the uninvert hack on your receiver, you need serial X inverted to be on even though actually your signal is uninverted and if you've done the uninvert hack you need tlm inverted to be on and if you have not done that the default state of those is off basically if the protocol is in its default state then serial rx inverted and tlm inverted should be off and if you have hacked and reversed the default state for the protocol then they are on and that is independent of whether the actual signal is inverted or not well, there you go, folks. That is the full speed Nano Receiver V2. Uh, we looked at the FreeSky version, but there is also a, an iBus version for FlySky users and a Spectrum version for folks using Spectrum radios. This is not the most full featured receiver in the world, but at a price of about 10 bucks, it is definitely worth considering, especially given its tiny, tiny size for your micro builds. There's a link to all three of the receivers down in the video description. Go check it out. Let me know if you've got any questions about signal inversion uh, down in the comments. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.